Welcome, I've done a couple different videos on my Mac Mini with the M1 processor, and I'll put a link in the description of my Mac playlist where you can find those videos. So in this video, I want to take a look at the disk usage. So there have been some concerns with the Macs with the M1 processor that they have excessive disk usage. So around a month ago, I started to track this. So this isn't a tutorial on doing this tracking, but I'm going to go over quickly what I did to do it. So I'll go to my desktop here, if I can type this right. I created this script called SSD log. PHP, and it runs smart CTL and I installed this via Mac ports and I've done a bunch of videos on Mac ports also and what smart CTL does is it gives you stats on your hard drive and actually I will run this real quick in my terminal and this will give me all sorts of stats. So I wanted this stat here, this data units read and data units written here. And if we go back to the script, you'll see it says dash J there. So what that will do is it will return it in JSON. So this is JavaScript object notation. And I just have a PHP script here that pulls that data in, it decodes it, and then writes it to a file using CSV or in the CSV format. And that writes it right here. So I named this ssdlog.txt and I should have named it .csv. So you can see on my desktop here, I have the txt and csv files and I just copied this and renamed it csv. So I have the script that when it runs, it appends the data to this file. So I will cat that file here. And you can see every line here is a bit of data. So we have a date timestamp and we have the units read and units written. And we can see if we want terabytes, we just divide that by two. So we have 26 units written is 13 terabytes and 12 is six terabytes. So I had this run every 15 minutes. So in order to do that, I used cron tab. So I typed cron tab dash E and I ran this. So I said asterisk forward slash 15 and then space and then four asterisks with spaces in between and then the name of the script. So this ran it every 15 minutes. So this ran every 15 minutes while the computer was on and awake and things like that. So this data isn't super linear, but we'll take a look at it and you can see the trend on it. So I did this about a month ago. I think I did it on March 2nd and it's April 3rd. So I have this CSV file and I will open this with LibreOffice. I'll hit OK here. Doesn't seem to be scaling for my monitor very well. There we go. So we have the three columns here. I'll select these columns and I can create a chart. I'll do a line chart. I'll hit finish. So here we can see in a month's time, the trend, bottom line is the units written and the top is the units read. So this would be five terabytes and this is probably about 18, so that'd probably be about nine. And we ended up here at about 12, so that would be six. So we went from five to six written and then we went from 18 to about 28, which would be nine to 14 read. So we wrote about a terabyte of data in that month's time. So is that excessive? It's hard for me to tell. I use this every single day to edit video so I have the video files I upload, but then also when the video is rendered, it creates cache files. So I don't know if this is the data written to it or if it's the virtual memory. So it could be the virtual memories writing to the disk quite a bit and then upping the disk usage. So I don't know if this is possible, but I've considered writing the virtual memory to an external drive to see if this goes down. So if I can figure that out, I may do that and then keep tracking this and see if these numbers go down. So the question is, is this going to wear the SSD out? And I don't have an answer for that. I did a previous video on booting from an external SSD. So if for some reason the internal SSD did go out, you can hook up an external SSD and boot from it and run it. And the one I use is a USB 4.0 enclosure and it's pretty fast. It's not quite as fast as the internal, but it's definitely fast for daily usage for most people. And I'm not the first to report on this, but another thing to consider is that the reporting tool is not working correctly. And I don't know if anyone has investigated that. And if you do know, drop a comment below. I'm interested to hear. But if for some reason that smart CTL software is not reporting the data properly, that could be causing this data to be skewed. So I said we wrote a terabyte in one month, but this is April and I've already had six terabytes written and I got it in, I think December, I got it. So I've only had this about three, four months. And I guess I didn't mention that I have that one terabyte SSD. So if you're considering buying one of these, it's probably best to get a larger SSD if you're a heavy user, even if you don't need the space, because then it can at least wear level the rights to the SSD and you should have more life out of it. So if you're the type of person that likes to comment that Apple was dumb for making the SSD where you can't replace it, then this a good video to put that comment on. My thought is that time will tell if this was a good idea or a bad idea. Thus far, it's super fast. If it wears out by next year, then it will have seemed like a bad idea. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.